Welcome back to Sprague of Our Homestead. I'm Vicki and today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own cranberry juice. So this cranberry juice recipe is a canning recipe. It's only going to be a water bath. I know I've got my pressure canner up here but don't don't worry about that. Um, it's a pretty quick process. Mostly all you're doing is you're going to put some sugar, you're going to put some berries, you're going to put some water and then you're going to can it. It's pretty quick. Um, so the first thing that we have to do is just get all of our supplies together. Um, you have to get your jars and when it comes to your jars, you're going to use about a cup and a, th a cup and three quarters of berries um, for every single jar. So it kind of depends on how much uh, cranberries you're going to buy. But to do seven jars, you're going to need about three pounds of cranberries. Now I'm only going to do four jars today. I want to save the rest of those cranberries to make some homemade, homemade cranberry sauce. Um, so just kind of figure that out based on how many you want to do. Uh, I know that's kind of difficult when cranberries are sold in really strange package amounts. Uh, I found 32 ounce, which is two pounds, but most of the smaller bags are like 12 ounces, which is only three quarters of a pound. So kind of figure out what it is that you want to do or just buy a couple bags and make as much as you can with it. If you have some berries left over, um, if it's not a whole lot, you can always just add it to the, the jars and just can them all up and, and not worry about it. I know not everybody wants to make cranberry sauce and that kind of thing. Um, so you're going to get your jars together. Go ahead and get those washed and get those heated because this is a pretty quick uh, a pretty quick recipe. I've already done that. So like I said, I'm going to make about four so mine are already in. Also, get yourself a pot of really hot water, uh, just this side of boiling. It, you can do boiling water, but I always find that I scald the crap out of myself when I'm trying to fill my jars. You're going to need probably a funnel just to help not make a mess. Uh, we're going to need some sugar and a ladle to help put the water actually in the jars. So once you've got yourself all assembled, now it's time to get the cranberries ready. Okay, so to get your cranberries ready, just go ahead and put them in a strainer or something in the sink. And what you're doing is you're just going through and you're picking out anything that's that's kind of wizened and bad. If they're kind of, you can tell because they're kind of brown. If they're starting, like mine have been in the refrigerator a little bit long, so you can tell they're getting a little bit long in the tooth. That's okay, because remember, we're making juice out of them. But we're really just looking for anything that's gone bad. You're also looking for stems um, because some sometimes you'll get cranberries that still have the stems on them, especially this time of year when they're packaging a lot of them. So just kind of go through your entire thing of berries. When you've picked everything bad out, just go ahead and give them a good rinse. So with your cranberries washed and your water getting hot and your jars getting nice and warm, you can go ahead and start getting your lids prepped and ready. Uh, depending on which brand you're using, you may or may not need to keep those uh, lids kind of simmering in some warm water. Um, regardless, make sure you've washed them in hot soapy water. And if you're using one of the like Kerr and Ball brands now, the newer lids that don't require you to keep them nice and warm in some simmering water, just go ahead and set them aside. Uh, get your rings together, make sure that they are clean and in good shape. I found some this last time that I went to can because of course we reuse everything and several of my rings were actually bent a little bit and dinged. I don't know what happened to them. Uh, but check them over really well. You want to make sure they're not rusty and that they're that they thread onto jars pretty freely. And uh, once that's done, it's time for the next step. Okay, so with our jars nice and hot, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my sugar. Now, not everybody does it this way. A lot of people go ahead and put their berries in first. I don't. Just kind of my own little personal preference. And we're using a quarter cup of sugar. Now these are quart jars, remember that. Um, we're using a quarter cup per, per quart. You can go up as much as a half if that's what you'd prefer to do, if you like a sweeter juice. Um, this is just kind of what we like. You cannot omit the sugar in this recipe. If you would like to, um, omit the sugar. There are recipes online for pre-extracting the juice before canning and that's really what you're going to want to do. Uh, this, this method requires the sugar to help draw the juice from the berries. 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to put our berries in. And we are using one and three quarter cup. And I'm just going to use this quarter cup that I already have out. All right. So one and three quarter is going to be somewhere in there. You're not quite to the to the halfway on the jar, um, but pretty close, pretty close. And then you're just gonna go through and you're just gonna fill up all your jars. So with your berries in, you're gonna go ahead and start filling the jars with the hot water. And you're going to go up to a half an inch of head space. And yes, your berries are gonna float a little bit, so just be ready for that. And a nice headspace tool makes a lot of difference. I just kind of assume it's close. You don't really have to debubble unless you're seeing a whole lot. Now this is where you're going to find out whether or not you've got all of your stems and things out. If not, they're going to float down to the bottom. It's not a big deal if that happens because uh, you're going to screen them out before you drink it. So we're just going to go ahead and fill all of our jars up to that half inch headspace, put our lids on with our rings and put them in the canner. Remember when you're putting on your lids that you're just going fingertip tight with your rings. Go ahead and get them into your canner and cover, make sure they're covered with at least an inch of water. Crank that thing up, let it get to a good um, rolling boil. I don't know why I have such trouble saying those two words together. but. Uh, and then you're going to go ahead and start the time. Now for me, uh, mine's going to be 30 minutes. That's for 1,000 to 6,000 feet of elevation. If you're below 1,000 feet at sea level, you're only going to do it for 25 minutes. And if you are over 6,000 feet, you are looking at 35 minutes. So um, we're going to let this thing get to a boil. I'm going to run the timer, and then I will show you what they look like coming out. All right, there they are, fresh from the canner. All four of them have already sealed. And uh, do remember when your time is up to take the lid off the canner and let them sit for at least another five minutes before you um, take them out. It'll help prevent siphoning. Now, when you're first looking at them, you might notice, since we put the sugar in at the bottom, you might notice that the sugar is kind of in its own little baked-in layer at the bottom. That is okay, and I'll show you why here in a second. But um, you may also see like almost a candy cane uh, striped type effect like it might be uh, the white sugar at the bottom and then a layer of red and then some clear and then red again it's okay if it comes out a little stripey it will be all right by the time you go to drink it with your jars all done uh, now you're going to go ahead and set them somewhere in a nice cool dark place and just let them seep for four to six weeks so what we've done is we've got the sugar in there that's going to pull that uh, juice out of those berries. And even though you might get a nice red color right now, it's not done. It's going to take a, a good month to let that flavor develop. And like I was saying with the sugar level, now these that I had done before also had had that sugar level at the bottom. And see how that's not there anymore? Uh, this has been sitting for about four weeks, so we're going to wait another two before we uh, go ahead and enjoy that. But you'll see that the berries have kind of shrunk in the new stuff, but then they've expanded back out again, which is pretty normal. Now, when we're ready to drink this, we're just going to go ahead and um, just dump the berries off. Go ahead and strain it through, and you can drink this as is if it's too tart. You can dilute it with some water or you can add some sugar syrup depending on what you want for flavor. Um, but see, this has already got that much nicer, darker color. And uh, now when you pull, pour the berries off of this, you can compost them if you want. Or you can actually, if they look in, their, in pretty good shape still, um, you can actually let them drain all the way out. Throw them in your dehydrator if you have one and make craisins out of them, which is what I plan to do when we... Uh, go to start enjoying ours. So that's it for today for Sprague River Homestead. If you have questions about this process, go ahead and leave them down in the comments or send me an email at srhomestead at yahoo.com. And that's it for today. Happy homesteading. We'll see you next time.